Hello and welcome to another tutorial for users of Excel 2010. In this tutorial we're going to start looking at charts. The first thing I need to do is select the data for the chart and here I'm going to select all the cells from A2 down to A9 and now hold down the control key and I can then select my rental values including the rentals label there from C2 to C9. So now I have my data selected, I'm going to go to the Insert tab, come to the Chart section on that tab, and I'm going to choose the very first option, Column, click on that, and on here I'm going to select the very first one, my simple 2D column chart. So just click on that, and as easy as that, there is the chart. Now we need to do some work on it. To move the chart, it's simply a case of click and drag but be very careful when you're moving the mouse over the chart. Now you'll notice there a little message has popped up to say chart area. As I move the mouse further into the centre of the chart that will change to show a plot area and again if I move it over one of the columns I get a series label. Now if I let's say I'm somewhere else in the spreadsheet and I just want to move my chart put the mouse right in the middle click and drag nothing happens because I've clicked on the columns. Equally if I click on the plot area, if I click and drag there, nothing happens at all. So I need to make sure that I'm in the chart area and with the chart area selected or highlighted just click and then drag and you can move the chart to whichever position you want. You can also click on the border of the chart to move it so just make sure you're right on the border, click and drag again now you can resize the chart as well using the drag handles. There are eight positioned around the border of the chart. So we have one right in the top center, which you can then use to drag up and down. The bottom center, again for dragging up and down. Right center and left center, again, these will help you move the chart size left and right. And if I click on the corner drag handle, you'll see that I can actually change both directions so I can make it thinner and then squash it down as well so it allows me to change in both directions using the one drag handle. Now if I hold the shift key down you'll notice that it locks the aspect ratio of the chart so I can resize it without accidentally squashing it vertically or horizontally which can make for a very unusual chart. So my recommendation is to hold the shift key down and use one of the corner drag handles as you resize to keep the dimensions in proportion. You may have noticed that when I click on the chart we get a different selection of toolbars appear. So if I click away from the chart you will see we jump back to the Home tab and if I click on the chart this new section appears Chart Tools, Design, Layout and Format. Now the next thing I want to do is change the appearance of my chart, make it look a bit smarter. And the first thing I'll do is actually delete this Rentals Legend item here. If I had more than one series of data that would be more useful but as I only have one series I just don't need it so I'm going to click on that and press delete. That's one important thing to keep in mind always about Excel charts is that all the elements are completely independent so you can just click and move them around or you can click to select and format or delete or whatever you want to do. So we'll go through the process of formatting the chart now and the first thing I'd like to do is make it a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing in terms of formatting and I can resize it back later on. So again I'm going to hold the shift key down, just use the bottom right drag handle, drag that chart, release the mouse button first, then the shift key. The next thing I'm going to do is just resize the plot area a little. So if I click on the plot area, I can just click on the top drag handle there and drag that a little bit nearer to the top of the chart which makes my bars a bit taller. I'm going to also just move the title off to the left a little bit. We'll come back to that later on. The next thing I want to do is make my chart label stand out a bit more, the down here. So if I just click on that horizontal category axis, I can then right click and you'll see I get a format menu pop up and I can apply bold formatting. I can also click on the drop down here and change the size of the labels if I want to. And as you see, as I move down, Again, we'll get this live preview, but just for now, I'll leave it at 10 points and the bold formatting is fine. So I'm going to click on my vertical category axis, then right click, choose bold formatting as well, just to make those labels stand out a little bit more. The next thing I'm going to do is format the chart area. And so I'll just make sure the chart area is highlighted when I put the mouse over it. And here I can double click. 
and I'm going to actually fill with a texture. So I'm going to click on that button there that says picture or texture fill. Click on the drop down and I'm going to choose this light blue texture here. Select that, click close and you'll see that's applied to my chart area. Next I'm going to format the plot area so just point and click on the plot area. Just make sure you have the little buttons around indicating you have selected it. I'm going to go to the format tab here I'm coming to Shape Styles and clicking that drop down at the bottom there that opens a full list of shape styles and as you can see as I move the mouse over we get again this live preview some of those look nice some not so nice and I'm just going to choose this light blue effect here and the next step in formatting is to format the columns so I'm just going to click on the column any one will do and as you see it selects all the columns and the first thing I'd like to do is change the gap width between the bars so the bars are a bit thicker than they currently are. So here I can right click, come down to where it says Formats Data Series. And on the Series Options you'll see we have Series Overlap which isn't applicable here because again we only have one series. But the second one down is useful Gap Width. Now it's set to 150% at the moment. And if I just, I'll just move that to one side you can see it happen live. If I just move the mouse to the left of the pointer there and click, you'll see it will move in 10% increments down. So we're reducing the gap between the bars and I'm going to reduce it to 90% there, as you can see. You can also just click and type in this box if you want, if you want to have a precise number. But I'm happy with that, so I'll close that down. And now I'd like to change the colour of the bars, the format. So again, here I make sure I have the Format tab selected in the Chart Tool section. In the Shape Styles again, click on the drop down and again you can see as I move the mouse over we get this live preview. Light blue on light blue doesn't look very good. So what I will do here is I'll choose one of these bottom options. And as you can see you get this quite nice 3D effect as well on these ones. So I'll click on that uh, dark blue there and there are my bars formatted. Next I'm going to add some labels to these bars because it can sometimes be difficult to actually work out what the exact value is. So to apply the labels I'm just going to right click and if I move down there you'll see we have the option to add data labels. Just click on that and you'll see the values appear. Now I'd like those values actually to be positioned within the area of the bar. So I'm going to actually click on the first one there, it selects them all. And now I can just click and drag down one by one and it'll move those values into the bar area or the column area if you prefer so I'm not going to do it too precisely just give you a rough idea that you can you can move them if you want to and once I've moved these I'll be formatted them so they're a bit easier to read as well so there we are now I need to select them all again at the moment only one is selected so I simply click away anywhere click back onto my labels and again they're all selected then right click on any one of those labels and I can choose the text color as yellow and the background color drop down there and choose red. I'll also apply bold formatting make it stand out a little bit more and I could even make the size a little bit bigger click the drop down there maybe 11 there we go just makes it stand out and I just click away anywhere from there and you can see now the charts. Uh, one last bit of formatting is the title if I click on that rentals label, again chart tools, format tab, we've got word art styles, I'm just going to select the very first one there. I'm also going to resize that so if I just double click on it you'll see we get this little mini menu pop up and I can change it from maybe 18 to 24 to make it stand out a bit more. Again just click away from that and there we have the completed chart. So one last thing, I'm going to just resize it one more time and reposition it. And I'd just like it to be the same height as my data table. So I'm just going to first of all click and drag to make sure it's in line with the data table. Then move the mouse to the bottom right, click and drag again. This time remember to hold down the shift key so we can keep it in proportion. Release the mouse button, release the shift key, click away. As I resize the chart you'll notice that some of these labels went out of position and that's something you do need to watch out for when you're resizing. So again I could just maybe click on it and click and drag down if I wanted to fix all those but I shan't worry about that too much. 
So there we have my completed chart, and if you want to compare it with the original version, again I can just go and select my original data in columns A and columns C. And a little trick here, if you hold down the Alt key, press F1, that instantly creates a chart. That's the default chart in Excel. And you can now compare the original to my formatted version and decide which you prefer. You might prefer the original better, I don't know. Anyway, so I'll delete that, just click anywhere on the edge there, press delete and the chart is gone. Now when it comes to printing with a chart, there's this couple of options. You can print with the data or you can print the chart alone. To print just the chart, you just click on it, go to the file tab, come to the print option and you'll see in the preview it only prints the chart. I'll come out of print preview by pressing the escape key and now I'll simply click away from the chart anywhere, go back to file, print again. It doesn't look very good at the moment so I'm going to go to page setup, I'm going to change the orientation to landscape, tell Excel to fit my data to one page. I'm going to go to the sheet tab as well, remove the grid lines because I've got my data formatted with borders, click OK and you'll see that that looks a bit nicer. I'll just again escape key out of that and we'll save that just to update the file. So that concludes this first look at Excel charts in Excel 2010. Hope you found something useful there and you can apply to your spreadsheets. Uh, in the next tutorial we'll be looking at creating pie charts. So thank you for watching this one and I'll see you next time.